first leadership talk series. As part of this talk series, last year we spoke to some very interesting personality. We spoke to Shri Ajit Dhawalji, our national security advisor, and he explained about art of decision making. Also spoke to Shri Anand Mahindra and discussed art of handling failures. How he handles his failures. Another interesting episode was with Dr. Anand Deshpande, where he spoke about startup ecosystem. I request my viewers to see our other videos because you will find those discussions extremely enriching. Today also we will be talking to very young, dynamic personality. His name is Mr. Abhishek Suryavamsh. He is director at Wikipedia. He started his journey in a very, very small village in Maharashtra. And now he is in US handling India operations for Wikipedia. Hey, welcome Abhishek, welcome to the discussion. Thank you so much. Are, uh, I remember meeting you about seven, eight years back when I think you were in your second year of pharmacy uh, in Pune. And at that time you spoke that uh, you have already started working for Wikipedia as a student or volunteering for Wikipedia as a student. So now, how was your journey? How long you are working with Wikipedia and how your role has evolved? It's such a long time. Yeah, like firstly, thank you so much for having me on this show and also thank you so much for being my mentor. I remember from the day I joined from uh, that time, not just for Wikipedia, whenever it came to bringing modern technologies to India, including TED conferences, TEDx events to Wikipedia, you have always been instrumental in support, uh, supporting me as well as the entire TEDx and Wikipedia community. So thank you so much for that. So almost like seven to eight years back, Wikipedia started, uh, Wikipedia decided to open its first ever physical office in India and they launched something called as India Education Program. The idea was simple. Wikipedia will go from colleges to colleges, universities to universities and work with college professors, deans and students uh, to remove misconceptions about Wikipedia. So that was their first ever biggest global education, uh, education program. And I was fortunate enough to be part of that program. Uh, do Dr. Sir, Sir Budde Sir was also there, who was also instrumental in uh, envisioning that entire campaign and global education program in India. It's been an amazing journey. That time I just started joining as a volunteer. And then eventually I started interacting with various volunteer communities. Uh, it's, it's incredible. Like all of us speak different languages, different cultures. But when it comes to sharing knowledge, everyone is connected with that one same goal. Like if I know something and I will go to any extent, like translating it, writing it for free of cost without expecting anything in return. So I feel very fortunate I'm part of this movement. And, and, and now you are a director. So and now you're a director at uh, Wikipedia. Right? Wikipedia SWAST. So Wikipedia SWAST is a special Wikipedia awareness scheme for the healthcare affiliates. Uh, right now, because, because of COVID-19 as well as in general, Wikipedia gets 10 times more traffic as compared to CDC, WHO or any other site. And last year we realized there is no, not even a single platform in India, at least for Wikipedians in India to talk and collaborate with each other. So I spoke with a couple of people in the US as well as the global community. Uh, how are we going to solve this? And that's when we come up with this initiative called as SWAST. Uh, it is a platform which gives tools, resources, financial, non-financial resources to the volunteer communities as well as anyone who would like to work with Wikipedia. So I'm, I'm just a mere soldier in this Wikipedia world and then the real work is done by 70,000 plus volunteers. I just do my bit and pieces to make sure they have what they need. So Abhishek, you have 70,000 volunteers uh, span across the world? Yes, uh, at any given point of time, uh, minimum 70,000 people come online to edit Wikipedia. These people are not paid by anyone. Uh, these people are don't have any other ulterior motive. These are passionate volunteers who believe some of all knowledge should be free and accessible to all. 
so uh, some are paid uh, people who are working like you are an employee of wikipedia right so wikipedia ecosystem is totally different there are user groups chapter like ted tedx uh, no one gets paid to edit wikipedia not even a single person officially from wikimedia foundation or wikimedia affiliates gets paid to edit wikipedia what people can get to pay it or can ask for money is to do workshops uh, do fundraising uh, do partnerships so i'm mainly focused on fundraising and partnerships so that's the how Wiki wikipedia is open source model anyone can edit wikipedia same way wikipedia is also democratic when it comes to the management tomorrow anyone can run for election and sit on a board uh, they can become a board member of wikimedia foundation which is a parent organization body apart from wikimedia foundation uh, there are various affiliates there are local user groups there are local chapters there are projects like wikipedia swast so currently what is the footprint of wikipedia global footprint in a sense global foot it's the fifth biggest website in the world facebook google microsoft yahoo and then wikipedia all these top web websites have more than 10000 plus employees wikipedia including all the affiliates will have around at least around 400 to 500 people that's it and it is world's fifth biggest website in terms of readership for covid 19 itself we are getting somewhere around 3 to 4 million hits per article but when it comes to wikipedia Uh, mm -hmm. the authenticity of uh, the knowledge or authenticity of description which is given on wikipedia is always question this challenge how you actually go ahead and try to maintain the sanctity of that platform or sanctity of the post uh, uh, the content part of it so wikipedia has very few basic rules uh, first is notability many people say like oh who decides what goes on wikipedia what doesn't go on wikipedia first is notability who decides notability a press media scientific journals articles i can say i i climb say 10 floors is it notable does it belong on wikipedia as compared to say i climb mount everest but who says that is it my facebook post is it my twitter or some mountaineering article is saying that maybe a times of india or few media reports say that so first we establish notability once the basic notability is established then second question we ask is does it deserve uh, deserve to have a separate wikipedia page for example say hari sadhu climb the mount everest did he climb it yes no if yes what his article is going to say just one sentence or there is a mount everest article and they have a table of people all the people who climbed the mount everest his name will go there there are different notability criteria for different things say i want to write about about scooter who will be a neutral point uh, reference for a scooter is autocar india or a neutral journals not scooter's own website because scooter's own website will be always uh, the second coming to your thing about credibility and then the credibility is linked to the first notability and reference part because these are third uh, third party references and we rely on uh, reliable references that's where the credibility comes into picture and everything and why we keep what makes wikipedia so special in this aspect is it is managed by the community no one has any hidden interest in putting any content out there volunteers are working day and night to make sure information is available and accessible to all but if you talk to some of the people uh, they say that uh, they have uh, went ahead and edited or corrected some information on wikipedia but again wikipedia reverts it back to the original content and sometime wrong message or wrong content actually gets propagated on wikipedia that's complain of many of the uh, users of wikipedia uh, first of all wikipedia as such uh, we don't have any staff Uh, we don't have any officers we don't have any paid editors wikipedia is like people like you and me if there are 10 lakh people watching a covid article per day that means any given second there are at least 500 to 600 people out of 600 you just need one person to see something is wrong they go and click on the edit button and then they can remove the information a simple thing is i have just asked people have you seen wikipedia's logo 
Wikipedia's logo is half globe and it's intentional. It's not like graphic designer forgot to fill in the rest of the pieces. It's always work in progress and there is always uh, no one can say this article is perfect because edit button is always there as uh, when it comes to anyone can edit. Uh, it is partially true. Not anyone can edit all the time. For example, articles like COVID-19 are locked. Uh, what does that mean? Only editors with specific uh, standing in the community can go and click on the edit button and more you edit higher up you go in the ranks. You start as an editor, then you become reviewer, then at the end you become admin and then the bureaucrat. And at each and every level, it's you get different rights, starting from how to edit, to block someone, delete pages. And again, no one in this entire process has any financial interest. Even me or anyone, even Jimmy Wales, who is founder of Wikipedia, cannot say this should stay on Wikipedia or this should not stay on Wikipedia. Very interesting, Abhishek. Now, moving from Wikipedia, we will actually talk about your journey because your journey is also very interesting. I think you are from a very, very small village in Maharashtra in near Solapur district uh, where there are about 500 people, 800 people and you started your journey. So tell us about that. How, what, how, uh, how you actually came to Pune and eventually ended up uh, working with Wikipedia and then now you are in US. It's a phenomenal story. Uh, I was born in a small village uh, called as Bolkha. It is in the border of Sulapur and Usmanabad district. Very few people. There will be more people maybe sitting in your office at any given point of time than my entire village. And I had severe asthma as growing as a kid and very few people thought I will survive. Oh, and okay. I was homeschooled most of the time and it was always interesting to me when I recovered from it eventually when I was like 12, 13 year old. I was really fortunate. My parents gave me the best healthcare access in the world. Uh, I am fortunate all my grandparents, cousins, all the family like made sure I get everything I needed. But one thing that kept me alive was access to information and people who cared about me. After around age of 13, 14, when I eventually started like going to school like a normal kid, uh, I joined National Children's Science Congress, uh, NCSC that time, APJ Abdul Kalam was doctor yeah. president. And that was a turning point for me. At that time, no one took me seriously. They was like, okay, he's doing his own thing. Uh, maybe he gets asthma attack. Let him sit at home. Let him do his own thing. And I innovated my own irrigation technique at that time. Of course, with the help of experts and all, I was very teeny tiny part of that entire project. Uh, one thing led to another. And then the next thing I know is I was like right next to Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Uh, I still remember it was back in December 2004 uh, in Guwahati. And that's also where I interacted with uh, Dr. Sahasra Buddha, sir. Uh, he was dean there at I, uh, that time at IIT Guwahati. And that was the turning point. And I learned what makes a small guy like me who spoke Marathi and the government uh, Department of Science and Technology launched a new TV series called as Hum Honge Kamiyab at that time. Mm. That was a time of Indian Idol and Indian government was like, we also need to do something in those lines. And the auditions were going on and I was from Maharashtra. Uh, that time I was studying in Nankrabodhini, Solapur and then I had that uniform of like this Gandhi Topi Kurta. And everyone was like, you study in Marathi medium, like they, you are competing with people from convent school. And I was like, it's fine. Like I can speak Hindi and if they really want to understand me, they will use translators. Mm. I gave the audition and I, I was the only one selected from Maharashtra. Oh, and, okay. And that, and I'm not saying that I was doing something extraordinary. Anyone living in my small community would have been able to do that. Only differentiating factor, me and them, I had access to opportunities. And when it comes to Wikipedia or TEDx, the same thing that drives me towards working for Wikipedia or TEDx or any so, other volunteer so, communities. So how you started working for Wikipedia? I think you started uh, when you were in first year, second year, right? When uh, 2009-10, huh? uh, 2009, uh, I was with the doing TEDx events. I hosted more than 60 plus TEDx events in India. 
and that time uh, wikipedia was starting the so wikipedia when you started form. hosting 60 uh, tedx events uh, you were in 10th or 12th or when when you uh, started so this was uh, this hum honge kamyab was 2006 7 8 9 was ted india happened 2009 ted conferences came to india they launched and what was your age at that time uh, i was 18 year old oh okay interesting I I contacted them when I was I think 16 or 17 and they say the bare minimum age is 18 year old mm. so I was waiting till my birthday and then the moment I turned 18 I started looking for these opportunities so TEDx and Wikipedia uh, happened hand in hand uh, the Gates Foundation played a very huge role 2009 10 was Gates Foundation celebrated their 10th anniversary and uh, i hosted their live webcast in pune and there were more people attending that webcast in pune as compared to their headquarters and oh. that was and uh, gates uh, the tedx events i was doing wikipedia was doing and gates foundation asked me like would you like to come to the us and attend ted conference and then the ted team tedx team worked uh, really hard on like giving me scholarships making sure i have all the funds and the, because of the gates foundation that celebration i already had strong connections in the uh, pune community not strong i was just getting started and still the biggest challenge was who will trust 18 year old guy who want to start something related to tedx wikipedia in pune and that's when people like you talk, uh, people like dr sahastra budde came forward uh, you guys never said okay tell us what is your age you guys always talked about tell us your idea Uh, tell us what do you need in terms of support and that time all i needed was venue space and some food for volunteer community and then that's when this uh, we hosted events in persistent we hosted events in college of engineering pune and i was really fortunate throughout the process either dr sahasra budde you or anyone i interacted with no one even at even a single time asked me for a single penny not even a single rupee and that's what uh, help me a lot if you have a good idea if you are passionate about something people will be there to help you it just you need to approach 100 people out of which 10 people listen to you and you just need two to three people and it's just about reaching out to more and more people so coming back to your question yeah 2010 11 uh, 2010 11 wikipedia also decided to celebrate their 10th anniversary and because i already had a setup which was equipped to do big, uh, this kind of support this kind of international events uh, hosted the event they said we are starting a actual brand new office in india would you like to be part of it there's launched something called as ambassadors wikipedia education program ambassadors as like you can join as volunteer consult there like various different open positions it's totally up to you and till that i always use wikipedia and then when i learned about how platform functions i was amazed and i asked them is it available in local languages because if yes then only i will be like more motivated and they said yes it's available in marathi hindi as well as other languages because i said uh, even with the tedx that was a thing i stopped doing bigger events we hosted a event at say persistent then we had like marriott and all these big partners Uh, I said I wanted to take TEDx to the slum communities, uh, underprivileged communities, and conduct events there. And who would sponsor it again? Like people like Gates Foundation stepped up and said, like whatever resources you need, we will give it to you. All in kind resources. Interesting. Same thing I told to the Wikipedia team. I want to focus on local languages. I want to make sure local uh, culture, local heritage is well represented. in pune we have something like pataleshwar caves pataleshwar caves was not did not have article on wikipedia shinde chatri like uh, one thing came to mind one thing comes to mind when you hear pune is shanivarwada and i was like pune shanivarwada is amazing no doubt about it but pune is much beyond shanivarwada so yeah. what we started we started wikipedia club pune a bunch of like enthusiastic who love pune city who love to share every saturday sunday we used to come together go around this historic sites take photographs eat some food share some create some good memories and write articles on wikipedia this model caught attention in someone in africa in sudan my friends there they say can you come to sudan and teach us exactly what you are doing because we feel we can also use this so then that year it was the year of arab spring 
and after that i was again for, fortunate to like go through that process and then also be in the sudan uh, work with the local volunteers and see that part of the world and then that also made me believe we are same everyone is same everyone needs access to knowledge everyone needs a platform and what connects us is that human connection and drive to share our knowledge Very so that was so that was like the just the basic how i got introduced into wikipedia like so the gates foundation wikipedia uh, gates foundation tedx and then wikipedia so abhishek we will continue our discussion you have an interesting background and the organization which you work for like wikipedia is extremely interesting so uh, as you rightly said in the beginning that you rely on volunteers so mm -hmm. how many volunteers are there in india which are currently editing wikipedia articles uh, unfortunately the number is two digit number on anywhere between 5 to 50 volunteers on the, hindi is the biggest volunteer wikipedia community uh, but as compared to english we are like very few much and why it is important because see after 20 30 years when the next generation is want to learn about something if they don't find it on google and wikipedia they are going to say it does not exist oh. and our culture heritage is not well documented on wikipedia so that's why i want to make sure uh, uh, kumbha mela we did a project with uh, nashik and uh, most of the kumbha mela articles or information was written by foreigners who visited nashik and that's when i pointed it out to the local community and then they were like okay it is as a nashik citizen kumbha mela happens in our city it is our responsibility to make sure it is well represented on the web so just for that simple reason i believe uh, we need more and more uh, in the indians to come on wikipedia and be content creators but see now uh, this is the age of artificial intelligence this is the age of machine learning you may not require that many number of volunteers now because you can actually do a lot of data from you can source it you can analyze it and put it so are you uh, or whether wikipedia is actively uh, using artificial intelligence to reduce its reliance on volunteers uh the answer is uh, uh, for editing no uh, we totally rely on human volunteers because machine translations are not that advanced yet and the second is of course we have bots for example if someone is doing particular edits on a particular pattern uh, then we have bots who will identify it another thing is copyrights wikipedia does not allow copyrighted information if someone copy paste something from one site and then comes on wikipedia we have automated bots who will quickly identify it okay this is the source this is from where it is copied from and it will be removed right away so it is a combination of both bots as well as human volunteers but most of the work is done by human volunteers because uh, wikipedia is open source all the ai and all that technology is advancing but it's not advancing at that speed in open source and open uh, open source community i think we have a long way to go it may or may not eventually happen hopefully it will happen Uh, but as of now no like wikipedia for content purely relies on human volunteers it was really interesting talking to you and before uh, we conclude i would like to ask what you would like to say to our indian youngsters especially uh, students who are in their second year third year final year you know either they are doing technology or conventional uh, courses what you would like to tell them based on your experience and your journey uh one simple thing i would say all you need is access to opportunities once you have access to opportunities firstly identifying the opportunity because i believe whatever i am doing anyone can do it from india and then the only thing which they lack right now is access to those opportunities access to information so i would say uh, keep looking for but, opportunities but, uh, on the internet who, who gives that access students have to themselves find it out or uh, students have to find it there by themselves those they, they have, have to be people, proactive they have to yeah, be they proactive. have to be proactive and more more than degree you need soft skills in today's world uh, you need to know how to contact people 
and from my personal experience i can say that if you have something if you believe in something if you reach out to people they will help you out of 10 people you just need one person to believe in you and then give you resources and in order to do that you might need to reach out to 100 people and then uh, sir you are another like great example of that when i started now now i like at least people like know me or like i know people but when i started literally no one knew me at that time i was just some 18 year old kid trying to do random things in life and i found out opportunities i found out people i would be nothing without people like you dr sir sir buddhe sir and others so i would encourage youngsters if you believe in something see people in that field who is doing it and tell them your passion tell them why you are doing it and eventually they will help and support you i think uh, we will conclude on this extremely positive note it was amazing talking to you abhishek thanks thanks for joining and talking to us thank you so much